we're going forth with our computer applications in nutrition series. And today we are looking at Nutri Survey as one of the computer application software used in nutrient analysis, meal planning, and diet analysis. What is Nutri Survey? Nutri Survey is the English translation of a professional general nutrition software, also called EBIS Pro. It is used to collect and analyze dietary intake data, and it is often used in research studies to assess the dietary habits and nutritional status of study participants. Nutri Survey includes a database of foods and the nutritional contents and allows users to enter food intake data either manually or using a food frequency special name. This software can generate reports on the nutritional intake of study participants, including the labels of various nutrients such as protein, fiber, vitamins, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, name them. All the nutrients that we would like to analyze in the food items that we consume, we can get them in Nutri Survey. Nutri Survey can also be used to compare the dietary intake data to recommend nutrients intake levels. Furthermore, it can also identify any potential nutrient deficiencies or excesses. Now, what are the useful functions that are contained in Nutri Survey? One, we have nutrient analysis and the calculation of energy requirements. We have meal planning of diets, diet history, food frequency, searching of nutrients in foods, and the handling of recipes. So, Nutri Survey uh, enables one to calculate the amount of nutrients in the foods, as I earlier said, and uh, to carry out personalized food analysis or group analysis too. So how do we carry out nutrient analysis with nutrient survey? First of all, we can fix the foods and scroll through the nutrients that we desire to assess. And it's also possible for us to analyze a single, that is a personal or many food reports. And these food reports and analysis can be printed out in one. How do we enter the food reports into Nutri Survey? We have best places that we can do that. Number one, as part of the food name, for example, bread. Number two, as the food number, for example, 25 for all flakes. Nutri Survey will list all the food items that are commonly consumed in our daily lives from number one to the last. So instead of inserting the name of that food item, we can instead insert the number of that food item. For example, if hot flakes is number 25 in the new survey on the list of the food items, then we can enter number 25, 25 instead of entering hot flakes. So these numbers can be found in the number column of the food selection sheet. The third way is as the first characters of the food code. The food code is in the food selection sheet also. For example, if you want to identify vegetables, they are denoted by letter D. And if you want to identify lots of vegetables under the vegetables, then you can go to G3 and to list for you all the lots of vegetables. The fourth way is using the right mouse button. You can just select manually using your mouse and select one group that opens a food selection sheet, then you can choose what you want to work with. When you enter in the food item, you have to be mindful to also enter the amount because it's from the amount that the, the extent of the nutrients in that food item are going to be analyzed. So you enter the amount into the amount column, just next to the food column. And it's also important to separate the meals with the heading to calculate the content of each meal. For example, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even supper. So if, for example, you want to list down the breakfast food to get, you're going to put a heading for breakfast. And after writing that heading, you will list down the food items you had for breakfast. If, for example, the person had bread for breakfast, you write down number one as bread, you put the amount. If you have two slices of bread, you write down 
uh, the two slices of bread. But remember, the two slices of bread are not going to be written as two slices. You have to not them in, in their SI units, grams. So if two slices of bread are equal to 50 grams, then you write 50 grams. Then again, if you have tea, you write tea. And then the amount of the tea you consume, which is 250 milligrams, you write 250 milligrams of that tea. And then also, if you have something else for breakfast, for example, two eggs, you write down two eggs, or just eggs, and then the amount of the two eggs, how much is contained in two eggs? If it is 30 grams, then you write 30 grams. You continue like that. And then if you want to write down another, the lunch food, so you separate it with a heading as lunch. Then you write down all the food items you consume during lunch. And also, if you want to edit, you can do that from the edit function. You can also multiply, modify the display of the right box, the nutrient analysis list, to decide the nutrients that you want to display. If you want to analyze the carbohydrate contents, or the fat content or protein content, you can select from the nutrient selection icon. When working with nutrient survey, it's always very important to save your plan. Once you start working, once you open a new page in nutrient survey, you immediately have to save. How will you save? It's just as you always save other files in Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint. You go to File, you click there, then you look for Save or Save As. Once you click Save As, then you write down the, the title of the analysis you're carrying out. If it is diet analysis or diet history for Kate, you write down diet history for Kate and you save. So to open your save plan, you can still go to File, then you go to the Open icon, and then you look, you look for that file that you have saved. You click on it and it will automatically open. If you still want to open a new or blank file, you can use the file icon, you click file, then look for new, and the new blank file will appear. So this is basically how the windows appear in Nutri Survey. And this is giving us an elaborate example of what I was talking about. Writing your heading for breakfast and listing down the breakfast foods. Going further, you write down a heading for lunch and list down the lunch foods that you consumed. So once you've finished entering your food items plus the amounts, you just instruct Nutri Survey for the analysis that you want. You can analyze for the energy contents, the water content, proteins, fats, carbohydrates as they are displayed on your right corner. All the things that you want to analyze will be reflected there. The total amount of vitamins that are contained in each of the food items that you ate will be displayed. And then you will choose what you want to explain or elaborate. So the analysis of the food reports in Nutri Survey is very simple. You can just pick a specific nutrient that you want to analyze. If you are only analyzing carbohydrates or energy level in the food items that you consume, you can still go ahead and only cut out that, analyze only for that, and then you output your results into Word or Excel. And then you can go further and explain why you complement with other nutrition analysis software. Now, in conclusion, Nutrition Survey has been extensively used and is still being used for nutrient analysis and index in dietary assessments and recipe or diet planner. However, as you use Nutri Survey, you have to always be mindful of the version that you're working with because computer applications keep getting updated every now and then. So you have to look out for the latest version. Always use an up-to-date version to carry out your analysis. Because this up to date version will contain more items and more uh, sheets for you to work with. If, for example, Nutri Survey 2010 had some food items that didn't have others, then the Nutri Survey of 2020 is going to have many more food items. Because every single day, scientists and human beings realize new ways of survival and new food items that are consumed. So these two items can be inserted into the newer version of Nutri Survey. So that's why it's important to always work with that 
the version that is up to date. Secondly, you have to always select the appropriate food database and recommendation regimes. And you have to complement this data with other databases or food composition tables for any context that is not provided for in the software. For example, NutriSurvey has many food items that are consumed by Americans. So what will you do as a South Sudanese? You want to analyze food items that are consumed in South Sudan. In that case, since South Sudan itself does not have any food composition tables, you go ahead to analyze and compare with food items that are consumed in Uganda or in East Africa or even Kenya. So you look out for food composition tables of Uganda or Kenya or Tanzania and you look out for the food items that are consumed there and here and you write down the analysis for that food item. If again that food item is not contained in those food lists for East Africa. You can go further to North Africa. You can compare the, the data for South Sudan with the one from North Africa, for example, maybe Egypt or the Greater Sudan. So that is why you have to always be flexible when you're using any of these applications. They are not accurate, they are not perfect, because nothing is perfect, of course, but you have to always find a way of working with it, making things easy as you complement with it, other software. So that is basically what we have for NutriSurvey. I advise all of you to go ahead and do further practice because it is through practice that we become perfect. Go ahead and download this software. Look out for the latest version. And once you download it, start working. Collect some data or use the existing information. Enter and analyze. Yes. Thank you very much.